Uh, thank you all for um, spending some time on this topic. You know, I started, at, as the introduction said, I started at Akamai 11 years ago working with broadcasters uh, as they were trying to put simple, small, thumbnail-sized videos online. Uh, their concept was, you know, we just want people to, to know that these products are available, these uh, videos are available, their linear channels are available. Uh, they were really also more interested in putting publishing uh, online, more articles and, and journals. Video was not as big. And then the online broadcasters, uh, sorry, the broadcasters figured it out, the linears figured it out, uh, and the market evolved in the U.S. And then, you know, I started working with the bricks and mortars uh, who were trying to do e-commerce online. And they said, you know, we don't know how to do this. Uh, we're challenged. We know how to do it in a brick and mortar situation. We know what each storefront, when people walk in to consume, uh, will bring us. But we're not really sure how to do the online thing. Akamai, can you help us? So we went in and we started helping them. After we helped those online e-commerce retailers uh, become successful, the financial services industry said, we know that we have retail operations today. We know that consumers are looking to come to us online. Uh, we're not quite sure how to create a digital experience that's secure, that's trusted, where the consumer who comes into our brick and mortar retail banking branch or our stock brokerage will feel comfortable coming to us online. So Akamai went and helped them do that. And as we did all those things, we stayed very closely tied to the broadcasters uh, who were linear in nature, who were doing traditional broadcast uh, with television and, and satellite. And during that time, a wonderful thing happened, which is born online, digital brands emerged. Um, and those brands don't have any legacy. Uh, they're not tied to any satellite broadcast rights. They're not tied to any affiliate broadcast rights. They're strictly digital properties. And they then started struggling, and they came to Akamai and said, we know we can do this. We've seen the linear broadcasters do it. Can you help us figure out how to do that? And that's a little bit of time that I want to spend on, on what I'm sharing with you today is what some of those challenges are and then how we help those companies um, that are born digital, that don't have affiliates, that don't have rights restrictions that may be traditional, uh, how we're helping them be nimble and how we're helping them get ahead and get online. So, with that, let me cover some of those uh, online viewership challenges. We all know this, we heard from the panel uh, earlier, excellent examples of all of these uh, aspects. Uh, the audience size is growing. Uh, this is happening all over the globe, whether if it's in the U.S. in more mature markets, in EMEA, uh, in emerging markets, uh, going into South America is fantastic because you see so many people coming online through fixed broadband, but really through mobile first experiences. In China, in Japan, uh, you're seeing a tremendous amount of uptake uh, online uh, for consuming not only traditional published content, but uh, VOD content as well, and a uh, tremendous amount of live content, linear content, uh, that's actually born digital, so not tied to traditional broadcast, but purely digital. We're also seeing a, a huge uptake in UGC content, personal broadcasting one-to-one -one communication happening online as well. So the audiences are growing. I don't need to share stats with you as to the number of mobile uh, folks who are coming online who've never had access to the internet, uh, the number of devices that are proliferating, um, you know, Samsung ties in TVs, Roku set-top boxes, et cetera. So there's many, many different ways that the audience is growing and many markets that are gonna experience a tremendous amount of growth. You know this in the room. People are watching for longer. We heard that uh, where online engagement is going up, is rising. One of the key factors of that is the ability for viewers to see higher quality content, streamed at higher bit rates. The higher the bit rate, the longer the engagement with the content. Um, so it has to be interesting uh, for sure, but once you reach that threshold of content that's interesting and compelling and personalized for that user, uh, after that point, it's really the quality of that stream that really dictates how long users will stay online. Uh, recent sporting events in the U.S. and in global sporting events, we've seen that the higher the bit rate, the longer the viewer is engaged. If there's any quality concerns, any interruption to that stream in any way, they immediately abandon. This, uh, the viewership drops precipitously um, and people switch to, if it's available, uh, traditional broadcast, TVs, uh, and the rest. 
the bit rate per user is going up. Again, I mentioned that you know, people are consuming for longer, and the higher the quality of the content, the more people will want to consume. Uh, but people have access to more uh, bandwidth in, in the home, more bandwidth on the mobile. Um, there are devices that can take 2K content, that can take 4K content. In Japan, we've had uh, folks streaming 8K content. Uh, clearly, this is you know, 17 megabits per second and beyond in order to get to 4K and beyond. Um, but even on a mobile handset, there are mobile handsets that can show you high resolution displays uh, where people want to stream high quality content and have it look good. And sometimes they're then you know, sharing that onto a device, um, they're side loading it, they're, they're sharing it onto a Roku, or maybe it's again that, that ties in TV. But the capacity for them to view high quality content is going up, whether it's on a mobile or on a tablet or on a, on a big screen device. So we know this, um, but these are the challenges that everybody's faith, faced with, whether they're traditional linear going online or born online, born digital um, um, uh, offerings. I've touched on this, but this continues to proliferate, whether it's devices like Roku or Chromecast, um, you know, Android is up there, uh, Tizen, uh, the multitude of devices makes it very, very, very challenging to make sure that you're delivering content reliably, smoothly, and securely. Um, that's appropriate for that device, that's appropriate for that situation. It's tough enough to get the content uh, converted and get it delivered to one user um, in one format. When you multiply the number of versions of operating systems, versions of devices, um, screen sizes, uh, and uh, broadband versus mobile capabilities, the combinations uh, are in the tens of thousands. Uh, when you look at trying to get the right type of content onto the right device uh, for that user so that you can maintain quality and security. Big challenge. The amount of concurrent consumption is going up. This, this stat simply says that, you know, at the beginning there were some interesting things that were being done online and consumers would flock online but not a lot of bandwidth uh, to be consumed. As you progress in the timeline, these are some bigger events. It's hard to see on the slides perhaps, but you know, as you go to some of the more recent events, 2014 and beyond with FIFA World Cup and, and now recently the Rio Olympics, you're seeing a lot of online concurrent viewership. And what's driving that? The two factors I talked about uh, previous are driving that. One, uh, viewers um, are growing because there's more people coming online all over the world. And two, their capacity to consume that bandwidth um, and the devices with which they can consume that bandwidth are growing. So there is a market here. You know the audience knows that this market exists. You know that it's accessible to you. But there's some challenges in getting to it. Here's one of the challenges, which is, this is you know, ripped out of the headlines recent news, where NBC's paid over $4 million to secure, $4 billion, sorry, to secure online rights, um, uh, broadcast rights in, in total, but especially online rights, um, so that they can broadcast the Olympics. Now, the, it's, again, sorry if it's hard to see on the slides, but one of the, the data points is that viewership was down 17%. But when you dig down underneath and you look at the actual details, turns out that traditional viewership was down 17%, but online viewership actually increased. And NBC was able to actually convert that online viewership with higher priced ads. So they actually made more money uh, from the online viewership than they did perhaps from the traditional broadcast viewership. Um, and the supporting stat for that is also that Akamai at that same time had surpassed even the, the 2012 Olympics in just one day. So the, the stat all the way on the right hand side of the screen says that essentially what Akamai was able to do in one day was the total of what Akamai streamed for the 2012 London Olympics. That's one day of viewership just this past month. So those are the challenges. We know them. You're all facing them today, and that's why you're here. But what are some of those opportunities? And you know, it was great to hear the panel earlier this morning uh, because we heard a lot of those opportunities being talked about. Here's an example, and these are 2015 stats. I didn't want to take anything from our speaker uh, later in the day. Um, 2015 stats show that the viewership is here. It is available. There are viewers in India today who are looking to consume online content. Yes, this was a live event. 
yes, it's Cricket, of course it's going to be big. Uh, but there are viewers online, and if you are able to capture those viewers, and if you're able to monetize those viewers with ads that are appropriate, you're able to actually be quite successful. So we know that that opportunity exists. What do we need to do? How can Akamai help capture that? So I actually don't have the answer. I took the answer from our customers uh, because they're the best people to answer that. And, and essentially their formula uh, is simple. I broke it down into three pieces. The first is secure the content. Now, this may sound so simple and so obvious. Of course you have to secure the content. You have to make sure you have the content. You have to either create the content. There was a lot of discussion about how do you create appropriate content but you also have to actually secure that content. So first, you have to either get the rights, license the rights, create the content on your own, make sure that you have online and, and offline and, and distribution rights and the rest, but you have to make sure that when you are distributing it online, that you're actually in control of that content from end to end. Um, one of our customers shared with me uh, at the NAB conference that they're broadcasting online in 137 countries. I said, wow, that's fantastic. That's impressive, 137 countries. How do you monetize that across all of those countries? You must take credit cards from everywhere in every currency. His answer was, we don't. People are stealing our content in 120 of those 137 countries. So you have to make sure you're monetizing, you're securing your content uh, and make sure that uh, there's no issues in, in doing that and, and the challenge is, is that you'll have to do that in multiple formats in multiple ways for multiple devices. Again, if you think back to those previous things, uh, not simple to do uh, from end to end uh, on every device, uh, in every um, part of the internet, in every part of the world, in every agreement that you have. So again, first, secure the content, seems obvious. The second, if my build works, which it doesn't, Okay, maybe we froze. I think we did. Okay. All right. Let's try that again. All right, the second is be the trusted consumer brand. Now, we heard again in this morning's panel so many um, insights into how to be that consumer brand, uh, how to build it. Now, you know, it doesn't start with just uh, taking that credit card or taking that mobile payment. It starts with being a trusted brand because you're treating your consumer with a great deal of respect. We heard one-to-one -one conversations, one-to-one -one communication. You have to break down your audience um, so that you're giving them appropriate content. Seems obvious, but when we've worked with customers who are coming online um, and they don't have a clear brand strategy, we wish them the best, but in our heart we know that sometimes they're not gonna succeed because they don't have a clearly articulated brand strategy. So that comes first. Um, that brand strategy then carries all the way through content into monetization strategies. So there's AVOD, there's SVOD, um, advertising, subscription, uh, advertising or subscription-based monetization. When it comes to advertising-based monetization, it really does have to be appropriate. Uh, you know, we heard from uh, our, our ditto speaker, Archana, that there are replacement technologies. You don't want to just show that linear ad on the digital side. You want to replace that. Uh, we heard that there's actual native content creation strategies where you're not simply placing you know, the Lacme brand on screen, but you're building it into the story. The Red Label story was an excellent story of building the humanity of that product, of that brand identity, into the advertising and monetization scheme. So you absolutely want to tr respect your customer and make sure that you're uniting your monetization strategy with how they expect uh, to be spoken to and how they expect to be communicated to. You also have to be a trusted consumer brand by again securing their experience. And what I mean by that is there, you know, where there's money, um, there will be crooks. And if you are taking online payments, if you have licensed content sitting in a data center or sitting in storage online somewhere, there are people who are going to want to take that content uh, or take the credit cards or take the mobile tokens or take whatever they can uh, off of you. There are people who will try to get access to it. You want to make sure that you can be a trusted brand and not let that happen to your consumer where their information is taken away or hacked from them. So those are some of the important pieces. There's one more important piece and that's be nimble. 
again, great examples from this morning's panel where you're hearing, hey, Middle East television may call you and say, I'd really like your content. Or somebody on an airline may want to put a specific you know, tab on, on the airline screen to say, hey, watch this special content. Or you may want to go into the rural areas. Or you may want to go onto college campuses. Or you may want to take some content and produce it and give it away for free, some content to be uh, ad uh, supported, and some content to be subscription supported. That takes a lot of nimbleness. That takes a lot of capabilities. You want to then insert appropriate ads. You want to do ad replacement technology. You, you want to go from client-side ad insertion uh, to server-side ad insertion. All takes a lot of nimbleness. You want to maintain your ability to ensure the digital rights. If you don't have the rights for that show to be seen in Qatar because you've licensed it to, to Middle East TV, you want to know that that user who is living in India has now flown to Qatar and is trying to watch that there. And you have to have a way to prevent that uh, access from happening. So you have to ensure that you're building a system, you're building a capability that allows you to control for all of these variables. So it sounds complex, and many, many customers start on online saying, you know what, I'm just going to go to an online global platform. YouTube, for example. Lots of examples of folks starting out on YouTube. That's great. You know what? They take care of a lot of things for you. They take care of storage. They take care of having an audience and, and a marketplace. They take care of ad monetization. They take care of all the device characterization. Is this on a TV? Is this on a Chromecast? Is this on an Android? Is this on an iOS device? Are they coming from a w mobile web browser or desktop browser? Uh, the native YouTube app. They take care of everything. But as we've learned, as we've heard, that disintermediates you from your brand and from your consumer. And that's where customers come to Akamai and say, you know, I want to take charge of that. I know that I have the capability to secure the content. I have the capability to, to be the brand, to have appropriate content. Uh, I have the ability to be nimble, but I need help. And I need help where it comes uh, to matter for me, which is on things that really should be done in the cloud, that really should be done uh, at scale. And what, what are those things? What needs to happen in order to do that? You need to have a partner that can bring you performance in the cloud, at scale, with quality. That's the most important piece, because if you don't have quality, you're not going to get that online viewership. You're not going to get uh, the engagement that you want. You have to have a complete workflow. Well, I mentioned a lot of aspects of the workflow. I'll show you a slide that hopefully won't make you go crazy. But there's a lot of aspects of the workflow. It is pretty complicated. You have to be nimble and work with a partner who can get you that workflow. And you have to have end-to-end -end quality and visibility. If you don't understand what the viewership times are, if you don't understand if somebody's having a poor experience, if you don't understand if somebody was denied access to content that they really had permission to view, you're going to have a tough time retaining that customer and keeping them over time. You spent a lot to acquire them, placed whole page ads in the newspaper to acquire that user, had a call center that, or an actual retail store that got that user online for you. But if you deny them access to the content, uh, you're going to lose that consumer. So this is what it takes. And, and the, the places that, that Akamai comes in is where we want to make sure that we're giving you the capabilities for live workflows or on-demand workflows. We want to give you the capabilities for managing the end user experience through device characterization. I'll give you a quick example of that in a minute. Um, but we want to allow you to manage the things at the top that really belong to you, whether it's rights management, license relationships, uh, subscription management, uh, content management, uh, publishing through affiliates, publishing through multiple channels, ad insertion technologies, and the rest. We allow you to partner with us to come together and make that happen so that you control the things that are core competence for you and take charge from an online global platform. This is where you own the brand. These are the things that are important for you to ensure that consumer relationship, ensure that content is appropriate, ensure they have the rights, but then allow a partner like Akamai to distribute all of that content for you. The last piece I'll, I'll leave you with is that as the customers go through this journey, they find a lot of new avenues and a, new, a lot of new challenges. And that's what makes it so exciting for someone like me to work with them. Uh, I'll give you an example of a customer in the room today um, who is using our predictive content uh, delivery um, technology. What that allows them to do is actually pre-position content down to the end user's mobile handset. 
And the reason they wanted to do this is because they realized that there are users who are walking to the bus stop, walking to the railway station, uh, who might be on the train. They might have a poor connection. If they want to engage them for that five minute conversation before that WhatsApp pings them or before they get a phone call, they have to have instant play, instant on. And what they'd like to do is actually preposition content for that user when they might be at home on Wi-Fi, not using the cellular data plan. That's a unique challenge. When, when customers brought that to us, we said, hmm, okay, that means we need to have uh, an SDK that works on Android and Apple and every flavor of, of those devices. Uh, of course, you're gonna ask us to have that SDK then for Roku and Apple TV and everything else as well, because you want that universal uh, access. Uh, we're gonna have to give you control over what content you push down to the handset but we're gonna to wanna to give the user control over whether they're using cellular or Wi-Fi, how much space is being used on their device, et cetera. That's a technical hurdle that is better for us to solve because the device landscape is proliferating. The understanding of the broadband connection versus the wired connection, wireline, um, cellular, et cetera. We're better at that because we're seeing it at the edge in real time. That's a challenge that we love to solve for. And, and so we have customers today that are using this advanced technology right now to push out content to their end users so that they can engage them with that instant play. They don't have to uh, have that consumer wait. That's part of being that trusted brand because they're saying we're that instant on brand. If you are viewing our content, you hit play, it plays instantly. You don't have to wait, there's no rebuffers, it's high quality and it's, and it's um, great, um, great savings on your bandwidth plan. One last example is we have customers who come to us and say, you know, I'd like to do a tie-up with a mobile uh, provider. I'd like to enable my content to be viewed for free when the user's on the mobile handset. I don't want to charge them their data plan. How can you help me do that? And by the way, I may do that with a, a carrier in India. I may do that with a carrier in Africa. I may do that with a carrier in the US because my content is very compelling and I want to make sure that they have those relationships. Again. That's something better done in the cloud, better done at scale. It's our uh, ability to zero rate the traffic where the content owner, the brand, doesn't have to work on these solutions. They simply come to us and say, please, design something in the cloud, design something at the edge, make my business nimble, allow me to own my brand while I rely on you to support the technology. So I wanted to share some of those challenges with you. I wanted to give you some ideas as to how customers are working with us, some of the, the unique things that they're able to do, uh, some of the challenges that you may face as you go through that transition uh, of being either born on digital, born on the internet, creating the content and then try to get it distributed, and building your brand, building your monetization strategy. So thank you, uh, and I encourage you to come talk to us later. Thanks.